Hi, my name is Sari Potter. <laughs> What's up, it's Sari Subs, and I just moved from the Philippines to the UK. I'm going to the UK. And the whole Hogwarts Diagon Alley thing, it's all real. Visiting the places that inspired Harry Potter and the places that they actually filmed Harry Potter in. So, let me show you the magic of England beginning in the Hogwarts Castle. Well, the Annick Castle. To tell you the story of how we got there, we of course had to take the bus, which we waited for, for a very long time. Moving on, chapter 1, The Girl Who Lived in the UK. To get to the grounds of Hogwarts slash Annick Castle, you had to walk through like these gardens. Walking through these beautiful gardens, I walked with the beautiful faces of my community. The castle was used in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And to enter, it was kind of expensive. It was around 1,400 pesos, but if you buy a ticket, you can use it for the whole year. Chapter 2, Admission to Hogwarts. So, here at Anik Castle, this is where they learned to fly broomsticks right here on what they call the Quidditch pitch. And this is where they filmed the scenes of Quidditch in Harry Potter. And they filmed a lot of scenes where Harry, Hermione, and Ron are walking around in the courtyard or outdoors. But this place wasn't just used for Harry Potter. All of the places, or most of the places in the UK, have a really rich history. And this place, I believe, was also used in the medieval times. So they had this like fairground area, which was so cute. I don't have much clips inside the castle because technically it's illegal to film inside the castle and I didn't want to go to prison, even if it was Azkaban. Then after touring, we just spent time exploring the city. Chapter 3 I'm Turner to York. I went to York two different times. We're going to York! So if I'm wearing different clothes, that's because I'm a time traveler. Chapter 4, the oldest and creepiest parts of the UK. The first stop is the Bar Convent, wherein they have this little chapel that has a relic of a hand inside, which is really cool, and the chapel is really beautiful, and in the back, they have this really beautiful garden that's perfect for having coffee, tea, and scones. We just had coffee and looked through the chapel at the Bar Convent, and the Bar Convent is like the oldest convent in the UK, which is really cool. Second stop is the York Dungeon, which is like this horror house and you're not allowed to film inside but you learn a lot about history and you get scared at the same time so that was a lot of fun too. The third stop is Clifford's Tower which is a tower on top of a hill and it's one of the last existing remaining towers and that leads me to our fourth stop. We're in this Mickle Gate Bar which is the start of like gate of like the York City Walls. Chapter 5 Walking the walls to Diagon Alley. Speaking of magical, if you ever find yourself in York, you have to walk the walls of York. It was honestly one of the most magical experiences I've had in the UK. In the sunlight, it's one of the most beautiful sights to see. It feels like you're walking in a dream where you're like running away from the castle. At the end of one of the walls, if you walk a bit further down to the city center, you'll find the York Cathedral, which is one of the most beautiful cathedrals I've ever seen just from the outside. But I didn't go inside because to go inside, you have to pay and like, I'm too broke for that. Chapter 6, Real Life Diagon Alley. The shambles is the real Diagon Alley because all the buildings are built like they're leaning towards each other and it's like all bricks and it's all old and apparently it's one of the most haunted places in the UK. We're in the shambles now which is like where they inspired like Diagon Alley and Harry Potter and it's 
it's so beautiful. It's my second time here and I think that it's, it looks it always looks so cool. And of course, it wouldn't be Diagon Alley if it wasn't full of cute stores. And of course, there's a Harry Potter store there where you can buy wands, just like Diagon Alley. You can also buy other Harry Potter merchandise there and and there's also a place called Potion's Cauldron that sells butterbeer. It was really cool to be experiencing Diagon Alley in real life because there was a wizard performing outside and there were dragons, fire breathers, and jugglers. Chapter 7 Non-Harry Potter fans try butterbeer for the first time. <laughs> So the first time we went to York, I went with my friend Lauren, who's a big Harry Potter fan, and we both got butter beers. But the second time I went, I went with two non-Harry Potter fans, and they hadn't tried butter beer, so I bought one for them to try. So this is a non-Harry Potter fan trying butter beer. No, it's not happening. Quite sweet. Is it good? If you like sweet things, yeah. <laughs> Another non-Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I love the cream. Chapter 8 York and Yorkshire Puddings. So, after all the exploring, we were really hungry and we made our way to York Market, which is an outdoor market where you can buy things, and we looked around for some food. And to finish the day in York, we got some Yorkshire pudding wraps and we sat by the river to eat them together. Or we can get this <laughs> We're having our Yorkie puddings. That's like half open. <laughs> Chapter 9, The Real Magic of England. So if you guys didn't know, this is my first time living in another country and doing things alone. I miss my family and I call them quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> To cope, I go on walks with friends. Where are we going? <laughs> we are going to Shirtner Pass. It's called Hadrianville Pass a lot of years ago. <laughs> uh, the wall was built here. Uh, the wall will protect English people against the Scottish one. Going on a walk. We walked Hadrian's Wall Pass where I got to try a lot of berries fresh off the bush and learn a lot about the different plants in the area. Can I eat the stem? I did not like that. It's a batch of his <laughs> And honestly, when you think about potions and herbs and cauldrons and like different kinds of ingredients, it's kind of cool because we actually have like real ingredients in nature. Tell them that I like to live my life this way. They turn around and laugh and I can hear them say. We stopped by St. Peter's Basin for some coffee and around us there were like boats and things like that and I feel like this is a very iconic, beautiful European experience. A lion in the sun looking at the waves Hanging with the boys now every day Pay for coffee in the morning but the surf is free we are now going home. We're coming from St. Peter's Basin, which is we walked one hour to get here. We had our coffee and everything, and now we're gonna walk one hour to go home. How much further are we going? Going uh, about 10 kilometers altogether. Play all day. After that, it was a long walk home with more berries to taste. You move to the front. You move to the back. 
and more of that real life magic where I'm living abroad doing things on my own. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'm so excited to show you more of the magic in the UK. I'll see you guys soon! Bye!